I hope you're hungry because it's time for a feast, a visual feast, a plot feast, a the thematic feast. It is the great movie, Babette's Feast. Let's talk about what this movie is about in part, what I like about it coming up next. <laughs> Babette's Feast is a 1980s Danish movie based on a short story from the 1950s by Isaac Denison. And this movie is very well put together. There's, it owes a lot of debt to Ingmar Bergman, but it's maybe a little bit more rich and probably more festive than Bergman. And yet the themes of religious struggle, sacrifice of, of the city versus the uh, exterior rural parts of the world. This movie is, I think, filmed on Jutland, J-U-T-L-A-N-D, which is outside of Denmark on this rocky uh, you know, rural coast, nobody goes there. And it's set in the 19th century, I think in the later 19th century, focusing on two older women. These two older women have lived in the same small local village all their lives. They've never married. They were the daughters of a great and famous pastor, now famous, his works are read by the queen, an authoritarian figure, also a great man of faith. And that sort of divide is in the movie the influence of this man the feast that's going to happen is going to celebrate at the hundred year of his birth he's not alive anymore during the feast but the people who are influenced by him including his two daughters in the local village are out to honor him earlier in the movie we get flashbacks that show these two women named after protestant leaders martin luther and philip Melanchthon, Martina, and Philippa. They were beautiful young women in their day, but their father, being an authoritarian, wanted them to stay with him. So he kept all suitors from pursuing them. They never ended up marrying, but there were two possibilities. One was for one of the daughters, a, an actor who was an opera singer and tried to teach her how to sing and believe she had the most beautiful voice he had ever heard. He wanted to make her an opera star. And the other woman, pursued by a soldier who later becomes a general, but he also is thwarted in his ambitions to court her. And then we get a flashback of why they have a servant named Babette of the title coming to their rural location to serve them, to cook for them. And she's there for 14 years. And for various reasons, I won't spoil too much of this plot. She stays with them in this really rural location. I will keep saying that because the film emphasizes how provincial this place is. These are hardcore Protestants, probably Calvinists. The word Puritan is used in this movie to describe these people. They're austere. They have, you know, limited designs. They're not into things of the flesh, as it were. Sex, beauty, and, and even marriage, which I find to be a little weird as a Protestant myself. Uh, they, they are averse to in a way, or at least their father was. This is compared to Roman Catholicism. For example, the actor in this movie is a Roman Catholic, and the general, the soldier in the movie, is a man of the world. And as it turns out, Babette, and we, we find this out, we know it even from the title, is a great cook or a cook of great capabilities. So you have all this sort of extravagant beauty, this feasting, aesthetic wonderment coming into a provincial austere world and this is of course a basic clash and it comes up as i said in ingmar bergman quite often the clash is between protestant and catholics as well in a way and this movie is once criticizing protestantism but also showcasing that there is some kind of beauty and great talent and artwork possible for these people nevertheless they are semi repressed or as some viewers might see them completely repressed and as babette prepares the feast that's going to feed them for this founder's 100th year anniversary or of his birth, they make a pact to not say anything about the food because they're worried that dangerous or evil forces are coming to get them. Philippa and I will just fill Babette's bun, but we have slet ikke foreseen what it could føre to. Now we have inlet us med farlige kræfter, der måske bringer ulykke. Hvad må der skal ske med os? Ja, vis os din barmhjertighed. Babette has won the lottery, some kind of you know national lottery that gives her 10,000 francs. And as we know, you can figure this out, not much of a spoiler, she actually spends the 10,000 francs on the feast itself in order to feed these 12 provincial Protestants 
who may not appreciate great French cooking or art or beauty of any sort. As well, the general, the former soldier, comes back with his mother, who is an aunt to the women, and you know the theme of lost love or love or romance that could have been shows up when the feast happens just about everybody attending it is old and this is an elderly person's movie a movie about aging lost desire what could have been nostalgia as well and the the inability to use great talents for example as i said one of the women could have been a great opera star but she stayed in a local place nobody knew about her and only the local people seemingly about 10 people ever heard her sing what is this movie about about a hundred different things there's so many different angles that this video could go on for weeks analyzing this movie which is on the one hand very stark scandinavian design very plain interiors as well being by the ocean the clothing of the people who live there contrasted with say the general whose uniform has stands out he's usually above them standing and towering above them that's an inversion of some of the talk in this movie of the spirit being above the flesh but here you have his extravagant uniform being above their plain clothing. The movie seems to honor and love everyone, in particular Babette's sacrifice, a sacrifice that brings about a feast, which is compared to the marriage of Cana from the Gospels in this movie, or say a number of feasts that are featured in the Old Testament. Of course, the people in this movie from the local village know their Bibles backwards and forwards. I find that this movie deals maturely with the question of lost romance impossible to achieve romance the question of what could have been you know there's so many movies even look at the great movies that have been made casablanca gone with the wind all the romance movies which make viewers emotionally long for something that two characters two would-be lovers can't have that is a great way to make money in movies is to make a strong story about two lovers who can't get what they want and to generate all kinds of emotion in viewers about that. Now that's in this movie, but these characters who are older, I think deal with this in a more mature fashion. In fact, they're dealing with this as premised on their belief in an afterlife. Here it's the Christian afterlife, and that will generate different ways of looking at this movie because the movie is all or completely predicated on the Christian afterlife, including Babette's ability to cook but her inability to use her gifts, except for this one time when she wins the lottery and is able to create a feast. Why can't she go back to Paris and you'll use her gifts? She was trained, spoiler, she was trained as a head chef. Why can't she use those? In fact, she doesn't even want to seemingly the movie ends up saying that babette will become a great chef in heaven or the afterlife now if you don't believe in that that's going to be disturbing you'll come out of this movie and maybe quite skeptical of what this movie is about in fact maybe come to a different conclusion but for those who believe as the characters in the movies do of an afterlife that they've been saved into a new world that will they'll live eternally you know, their hope is placed in that. And I think those that's the point of view of these characters at the very end of the movie, coming to grips with the fact that one, they can't get married ever because now they're old. Two, uh, they had great talents, but now they can't really use them. And that brings up a major theme for me, which is the sterility of this local place. No, nothing really grows. They can only get fish there. And then the women haven't had children. In fact, there's seemingly no children in this movie. There's no artistic creativity or very limited creativity on the part of these locals. And so they don't generate much seemingly creatively in contrast with, for example, Babette and then the opera singer and then other kinds of sort of lavish scenes we see very briefly in this movie. For Christians, both Protestants and Catholics, the claim that God is creative and generative, that he is bountiful, and then feast days celebrate that, like Christmas, for example, are at the core of the Christian faith, in my view. Just read the book of Genesis, which does have this very strong theme of sterility generating nothing versus seed and generating something, the new generations, a garden, and feasts, and so on. And then these Protestants who are very faithful, they do good works, don't seem to be generating much, and as I'm saying, they're sterile, but the movie is also criticizing that or making it more complex 
in that these Protestants are also capable of great beauty and appreciating great beauty. And perhaps Babette realizes that and wants to give them even more of a gift and show them more of something beyond their local environment. And I hope you see more in this movie. So what do you like about this movie? What do you think about it? Let us know in the comments. There's, as I said, weeks worth of material to discuss here. Thanks for watching. Please subscribe to this channel for more great content. Thank you. Have a great day.